This is shuttle launch control at T-minus three hours in holding with one hour, 16 minutes remaining in this built-in hold. During this uh, hold, the final inspection team is on the pad for most of the entire duration of that two-hour period. They entered the pad as we went to the T-minus three hour and holding point at about six o'clock this evening. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus three hours and holding. The closeout crew is in the white room awaiting the arrival of the astronaut in about another 90 minutes time. Temperature at launch time expected to be about 49 degrees with easterly winds 8 to 12 knots and a humidity about 70 percent, visibility 7 to 10 miles. This is shuttle launch control at T minus three hours and holding. We're now live in the crew quarters where we are undergoing our suit up activities for tonight. Here's Dr. Bernard Harris, our mission specialist uh, number one. Michael Fole, mission specialist Dr. Uh, Fole's MS number two. He's our flight engineer on this mission. And there we have uh, Vladimir Titov making his first flight on the shuttle. He spent one year on board the Mir space station. This is his third flight in space. And he'll be doing a lot of the communications between the shuttle and the Mir. Here's our first woman pilot, Eileen Collins, making her first flight. Janice Foss making her second flight. She's uh, prime on the RMS for the Spartan retrieval, among other things. And that appears to be our commander, Jim Weatherby. He's making his third flight on STS-63. At T minus three hours in holding, this is shuttle launch control. And here they come. James Weatherby, our commander James Weatherby, pilot Eileen Collins, mission specialist Michael Fole, mission specialist Janice Voss, Dr. Bernard Harris, and Vladimir Titov. Heading by now to pick up the countdown. We have about uh, 15 seconds remaining in the hold. And again, we're not working any problems in the countdown tonight at all so far. Four, three, two, one. And we're at T minus three hours and counting. This is shuttle on control at T minus two hours, 41 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. In the white room now, we see Commander Jim Weatherby being assisted with his launch and entry suit as he prepares to enter space shuttle discovery. And Janice, uh, or rather uh, Eileen Collins, will be sitting in the right front seat of discovery. she goes. T minus four minutes. Yellow, let's go for port sequence four. Preparing now to gimbal the main engines of the orbiter and the flight controls. We see now the orbiter's elevon being moved. Standing by to retract the Gox Vin arm, the Gox beanie cap. TLTOTC, clear caution and warning memory and verify no unexpected errors. TLT, that can work and no unexpected errors. 
OTC copy. Cassius Oxygen Vent Hood now being moved off the top of the tank and retracted to the launch position. Liquid oxygen tank now at flight pressure. Discovery crew, OTC, close and lock your visors. Initiate O2 flow. Have a good flight. That's been working. Thanks a lot. Standing by to turn off the heaters on the solid rocket booster joints. And then we'll have a final check of the booster One commands. Minute. Solid rocket booster One nozzles minute. being gimbaled. T minus 18 seconds. Solid rocket booster is armed. Sound suppression water system activated. Ten. T minus 10 seconds. Go ten for main engine, for start. main engine start. Main engine's now started. Main engine's up and running. Three, two, one, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Discovery on a mission to prepare for the next era of world cooperation in space. Hello, program Houston. Roger roll, Discovery. Houston is now controlling Discovery on its 20th trip to space. Discovery rolling on course for an orbit with the Mir space station. Mir currently half a world away above the Indian Ocean. Three engines on Discovery now throttling down to two-thirds throttled. Discovery's altitude now 17 nautical miles, 15 nautical miles northeast of the Kennedy Space Center. Discovery traveling 2,800 miles per hour. Flight controller standing by for burnout and jettison of the twin solid rockets. Booster officer confirms a good separation and jettison of the twin solid rockets. Discovery now in its second stage, three main engines. Did I see that we're predicting a two-stage bucket here? That's what I thought I believe that's true. Okay. Fifteen. Ten. TLS is go for main engine start. All vents open. Copy vents. Liftoff confirmed. Copy liftoff. Hello, program Houston. SRB set. Copy SRB set. Stand by for two-engine tail. Mark. Discovery, two-engine tail. Two-engine tail. 103 converged. Copy, 103. Performance nominal. Discovery, performance nominal. Nominal performance. No action, R1U L2D failed off. Discovery Houston, 
Domino Miko, Ohms 1 is not required. We also see R1U and L2D failed off, no action at this time.
Yeah, guidance, navigation, and control officer here in Mission Control reports that uh, the crew has completed their flight control systems checkout, and uh, data processing systems officer reports that the onboard flight control computers for Discovery are now being transitioned from the checkout software. They've been in uh, for the past hour and 15 minutes back to the software that is the standard for orbital operations. That uh, checkout appeared to go very well with no problems uh, seen by flight controllers on the ground. Uh, all of Discovery systems in good shape for the return home planned for Saturday. Okay, lights 3G1, 3G2, and 3G3, uh, flickering only 3G3, one grab. And next, uh, lights HD1, HD2, and HD3, after power on, was green, were green, after four minutes, right now, red. as an extension uh, to the mid-deck of the space shuttle, allowing uh, experiments to be stowed along in uh, mid-deck lockers uh, seen on the right-hand side of this television view. On board Space Hab uh, for this flight are 20 different experiments that have been operating uh, for the past three days. Space Hab Park, Discovery Force, DDBA. Go ahead. Uh, terminate uh, gaps 12 and 13 complete. Gap 13 was at 5 slant 5 colon 1 5. Copy that, thanks. Houston Discovery uh, for Pelos on Glow. Go ahead, Mike. Story, I just switched out the VIUCM and. Um, once again, I have the same signature. I must say, I think it's the signal and uh, not so much the configuration. Okay, thanks for your efforts. Wex, we suggest you go to the other controller. And as you know, you uh, just pin it to the other actuator and select the other controller on L1. And Discovery Houston, on camera, bravo. We've had some uh, last-minute requests from uh, Odorax to uh, do some adjusting for camera, bravo. We're going to do uh, that at this time. No action. Roger. First one's away, Houston. First sphere. And there goes a the dipole. There goes a the second sphere. And a dipole. There's the third sphere and a dipole. And we copy. Proper velocity. And we copy Wex. We watched it from the ground. It was uh, very interesting. And we have camera D uh, at this time, Eileen. Okay, thanks. Discovery, here comes the door closure. And we copy and we're watching.
regard the uh, 4S, RS-422, I found it uh, downstairs in the midday. That's good news, Mike. Discovery Houston, uh, when somebody has a chance, uh, we'd like you to turn on tips. We have a couple of messages to send up to you. There'll be messages number 8 and 17. D1 plus 325, stop uh, maneuver rotation. And we copy. Good morning from the flight deck of Discovery. We're uh, in preparations, final preparations for our rendezvous with Mir, which will occur in a couple of hours. We'll initiate uh, the, the final portion uh, and enter the checklist here in a couple of hours. I thought I'd walk around the co or float around the cockpit and show you a little bit about what we'll be doing in the next uh, four hours. Uh, both Eileen and I will be up in the forward part of the flight deck in our seats uh, for the first part of the rendezvous. And let me step back just a second. Uh, the very first maneuver that we accomplished for the rendezvous occurred at launch. Uh, we waited until the launch pad was in the plane of the mirror, and then we quickly launched into that plane. Ever since launch, we've been doing a couple of burns to optimize the trajectory in preparation for the rendezvous. When we get into the final portion of the rendezvous timeline here in an hour or two, uh, Eileen and I will both be in our uh, forward flight deck seats. Most of the burns that we accomplished at that point will be targeted by the ground, or I guess all of them will be targeted by the ground. 
It's all done automatically by computers. We just verify the data and enter it into the keyboards uh, and then execute the burn. As we get into the middle portion of the rendezvous, uh, it becomes ground targeted. Uh, we have onboard steering, but it's a manually flown burn. We will actually control the burn manually via that ground targeting. Eventually, we go to onboard targeting, where the sensors onboard the vehicle are a little bit more accurate than the ground tracking uh, solutions. And so we do that manually up here in the front part of the flight deck. As we get into the final portion, I will float to the aft station and we'll perform the last couple of burns uh, before getting into proximity operations from the aft station. I will be looking uh, out the overhead windows facing backwards in the vehicle, but of course in space everything is relative, so it doesn't matter. We have a set of controls back here, and we can fly translations of, of our vehicle with this hand controller and rotations from this hand controller, although the rotations are typically uh, all done automatically. We will acquire a visual sight of the mirror at this overhead window, and I have a COAS sight or a hard-mounted manual sight in the overhead window when all else fails. Mike is going to tell you a little bit about his magic devices and his ranging sensors. When all else fails, if, if they start acting uh, funny or the radar starts walking around on the mirror giving us bad navigation, we always have the old uh, iron sight at the top window which never moves and there's no software and so it's a reliable piece of gear and then we just fly uh, visually. As we pan around over to the port side of the vehicle, uh, I'll take the camera and I'll offer the mic to Mike and he'll tell you a little bit about his magic sensors. And Houston, while uh, Jim is over there on the uh, starboard side looking out over the overhead window, up that way, uh, basically Vladimir, myself and Eileen will be on the flight deck um, supporting him and uh, we'll be using the rendezvous tools. And these are computers that we have set up Specifically, that will allow us to plot the rendezvous going on here and on here. And we'll have trajectory displays from our different sensors that are in the payload bay. I actually have a handheld laser also that I will shoot out of the window, and I will be pointing it up out of the overhead. Handheld laser is really no different from anything that the police would use to do uh, traffic traffic patrol monitoring, and uh, we can basically point it out of the window and pull the trigger, and I get a readout on the back of it as to how far away the mirror will be, and also how fast Jim is closing on it. In fact, when I pull the trigger, it will actually be displayed back here on these computers, and I can take those uh, range marks and put them into the computer and get an idea as to how our trajectory towards the mirror is progressing. This is Mission Control Houston. We continue to receive a television image from Discovery as uh, Discovery passes uh, to the west of Australia of uh, the Mir space station currently lying less than 200 nautical miles ahead. Mir is the uh, steady bright light located in the upper half of the upper center of the television image. Discovery just moving into sunset, also visible in the image are uh, pieces of ice and uh, fuel that has leaked uh, from steering jets and uh, also uh, other such items that uh, remain with the shuttle as it circles in orbit and are very visible during uh, times of sunrise and sunset. Uh, those particles show up very brightly. Discovery, good config, go for the burn. Roger, go for the burn. Can you see the uh, configuration? Configuration right now. 
this like station and three levels of uh, solar battery. It's nice. And Houston Discovery, I have my first mark at 3037. Copy, Mike. In Discovery, we'd like a low Z at 1,000 feet. Low Z selected. Update 1,023, Houston. Copy. And Houston Discovery, uh, the LTI off the docking port is 424, and the uh, TCS is showing 428, so that's about what we always predicted. Thanks, Mike. Tell block, Mike. Tell block 24 Alpha some more. Лена, я тебя слышу хорошо, как меня прием. Houston, when can you get cameras again? Just about now. Good, it's unbelievable.
top. What page am I on? The next block is 38 Alpha, which is on page 38. Okay. And you do that at, it's the next thing you do. Okay. And so, let us out there. How confident are you in that? Pretty good now. Oops, stop that now. Stop it. What are those pulses you're doing there? Okay. Quit doing that. I'm going to start taking ranges again. Discovery has uh, started a, a slow ascent from the uh, velocity vector. Oh, Discovery for Veloja. Closer together. We are bringing our nations closer together. The next time we approach, we will shake your hand, and together we will lead our world into the next millennium. Meanwhile, we're getting live pictures from inside the Amir space station. This is uh, physician Dr. Valery Polyakov. He uh, currently has the uh, record for the most time spent on orbit by uh, any human. Go ahead, Discovery. Yes, sir, as the sun came up, they were in the maneuver, of course, and uh, they're firing jets, we're firing jets, their arrays are moving. It's a beautiful sight. It's a great world. It is a great world, Wanks. Up there and down here. Хорошо, прямо в центре экрана. Все отлично идет. Картинка хорошая очень, хорошая. I want to say that Mir is very beautiful, and it was very shiny, and we are very happy to meet you in the sky.
Discovery, a magnificent picture, mirror crossing the horizon. Well, we should have it on IMAX also, and uh, we certainly have it in all of our eyes. Yes, sir. Some of this information may have gotten to you by another means, but you are go to approach to 10 meters. Thank you very much, Story, and uh, to everybody who worked the issue, again, thank you very much. You're welcome, and thank you for all you have done. Discovery Houston, it's handover down here in uh, handover time down here in the control center. Uh, Rob and Mark will take it from here. Paul and I have uh, had a pleasure putting their things together. Uh, have a great time, enjoy the view outside, and uh, heads up, watch out for that first step. It's a long one. Harrison Fuller are currently going through uh, checkouts of their spacesuits to ensure that they're in uh, good working order before. Before they begin a uh, pre breathe again of pure oxygen that will last uh, four hours. And we copy, Volodya. Do this view showing uh, Mike Fole suited up in the airlock and uh, Bernard Harris. Once again, Mike Fole is EV-1 and is wearing red stripes on the legs of his spacesuit, and Bernard Harris is EV-2. Mission Specialist Mike Fole is, uh, has completed installing the large handling tool on the Spartan spacecraft. He will now go to a point where he will be able to ingress the portable foot restraint on the end of the robot arm. Bernard Harris is uh, in currently installing a small handling tool on the other side of Spartan. 
Mission Specialist Vladimir Titov will now maneuver the robot arm to a position where the two spacewalking astronauts are well above the payload bay. This will put them in an environment that is as cold as uh, possible. Going to release on my mark. Three, two, one, release. Go to release, Michael. I see it moving. Be careful. The Spartan is clear. It's released. Be careful. And for not, I felt the springs push up on it. Yep. I have tipped up on this end, Mike. Okay. I'm going to lift it out of the guides very slowly. How high am I in the guides on that side? Uh, you're two inches above the guides on this side and seem to be tipped toward me. That's correct, Mike. You're a little bit lower on your side and higher on Bernard's side. Okay. Discovery. Okay, coming up. Unfortunately, we're a minute and a half to Teeter's LOS. Get you back at nine hours and five minutes. Mike, do you have your hands pulled out of the gloves? Yes, I do, and it's, that's the best way to do it. And, Mike, uh, one action for you to help you warm up, if you want, is to set your water to off. Michael, I am ready to maneuver. I am ready, Claudia. Okay, start to forward. That's good, continue. Okay, Ali, my left tether is closed and locked on the Landron. Okay, I copy that. Next is to disconnect your slide wire safety tether from the end effector. You ready to go down? Sorry? You ready? Yeah. Two seconds. Okay. You got it. I got it. Uh-oh. I have it still tied to me.
that's in it. Well, this, in this SMS, that pink comes on a lot later than we're seeing it. Yeah. It's nice, maybe. Yeah. Right. Because we're not even going to lose the guidance here. Yeah, we're starting to get some indicators. Landing gear's down and locked. Main gear touchdown. Discovery yet. Standing by uh, for drag chute deploy. Nose gear touchdown. Discovery rolling out after 3 million miles and 130 orbits. Roger, we'll stop Discovery. Welcome home and uh, congratulations on an outstanding mission. Y'all did a terrific job up there. GNC, CSS, all axes. 3, 000, about 3,000 feet low there at the 180. Low at the 180. Discovery Auto put you uh, low at the 180. Roger. Discovery on glide slope and center line. Surface winds remain 180 at 6, peaking to 8. 